welcome to my shop. Today I'm doing a video about this panel saw that I got years ago because I posted some pictures around the shop and people asked about it. So I decided I would do a quick little uh, video about the use of these panel saws and they do come in very handy. Let me point out a few things to you first. It's made up of a perpendicular base at the bottom here with a solid surface here and then rollers along the rest of the way. These are all adjustable and it's important that they be perfectly flat. If they're not, then when you come down with the saw and you make a cut, the two pieces of plywood could actually do this and tighten up here. I tend to, after I make my cut, even though it's very close, slide the two pieces apart before I withdraw the saw back to its starting position. And that way I'm not making a secondary cut on the return of the saw blade. I'd like you also to notice that here on this bar and this bar are two tape measures. Both of them starting at zero for the cut and then going out and zero for the cut and going out this way. These are pretty accurate, but I nevertheless will always take a board, do my measurement and then put a line and another line so I know where the blade should be. Then once I've moved it into the saw, I do a practice cut just to make sure I'm correct. Here are the three tape measures along the saw that you could use for cutting and measuring. There's one down on this right side. Here's one on the left side. And this one that goes up the saw. The one that goes up the saw is to set the height of the saw when you're ripping. If you were going to run a board through it, then you would take the saw up here, which will rotate, and you can turn it around, aim it towards the board as it comes in, and you can slide your board across, thereby making a rip cut. I never use this. I only use this saw generally for cross-cutting. Take note of the way that it's wired. This did have a switch in here, just like any circular saw. But when I got this saw, it had been taken out and the saw had been wired to uh, an alternative switch. So when I set it up here, I wired it to this switch and outlet that I can control very easily being away from the saw in whatever aspect I have the saw set up for. That way I'm able to turn it on and leave it on and not have to hold on to the switch that may have been in the original Milwaukee circular saw, which is a two and a half horsepower Milwaukee saw. The saw has two pads, one up here and one up here, and those are for catching it when it comes back up and buffering the stop. Above that, you see you have a spring with an airline cable coming down, and that returns the saw back to its original position. I have it tensioned a little lower because it's easier to pull down, so it doesn't quite go up as high as it should, but it's not necessary because the saw the top of my plywood is way down here. So that's not an issue as long as it stays up and is easy to retrieve. Here is a stop that you can pull out and that allows the entire saw to rotate. You can also replace this with a router if you wanted to, to do grooves for shelving or datoing. Um, I've never done that, and I don't see the need to because I can do that by hand with a router. Um, in here, this, these screws just are the guard for over the blade. 
You can see the mounting here for the saw. At the uh, bottom, there's a space open for the blade and the saw to come past the runners and thereby complete the cut on the bottom of the plywood or MDF. And there's a central channel that the blade stays within. Even when you turn it around the other way, because these are angled in, the circular saw blade, if it's turned perpendicular, will still clear these two pieces of steel. It works fairly well. I'm not going to use it now because it's so loud. Maybe I'll do one cut for you. This panel saw, I would have to say, has saved me a lot of effort in larger cabinet runs or furniture that's box cabinets, things like that with plywood, where I had particularly a lot of plywood that I had to cut down to smaller sizes. And generally what I would do is I would rough cut everything on this saw, and then I would switch over to the table saw and do final trimming. Uh, a lot of times plywood construction requires um, edge banding of either strips uh, like a veneer, like an iron-on edge banding, or a solid wood edge banding, in which case um, it's important that you're accurate on those sizes. So what I would do is I would rough cut these to within, say, a 32nd of an inch of the side, my end size, and um, consider which kind of edge banding I have so that it works out. Once you have this pretty much set up, you can really go through a lot of plywood. You can also put a stop on that end, so or either end, so you can bring your plywood through and do repeat cuts. Very simple. The other nice thing about it is that you can uh, do uh, an eight foot board easily. The way I've got this set up in my shop is that I have enough room to remove an eight foot board on either side of the saw. The saw itself is 10 feet long. So you have five feet on either side of the blade or your cut. Um, and then you have another three foot length of plywood. So in loading and in determining where in my shop I was going to put this, I wanted to make sure that I could not only get a piece of eight foot plywood in easily, but also remove it on the far side. This, uh, as I said, another place in this video, this was for sale by the federal government on a drug uh, bust. They busted a, uh, a shipbuilding place down in eastern North Carolina. They were putting drugs in the hulls of these ships. And it was a big operation and they were actually doing nice boat building and, and work there, but they were supplementing it with the drug trade. I got a beautiful old-fashioned, uh, an old, old uh, antique toolbox with tools in it, some nice rules and things from, I would say, the early 19th century. Mahogany toolbox, as well <clears throat> as this saw and a big steel cabinet with little uh, cubby holes that were filled with stainless steel bolts and stainless steel screws. So I made out very well at that auction. I would guess that that was 20 years ago. So I've been using this saw for at least, at least 20 years. And uh, it wasn't new when I got it. They had used it, um, but it was fairly well tuned up. It's taken two moves, one from the shipbuilding place to my old shop and now to this one, and it still holds up very well. Um, it's very handy for anybody that's doing cabinet work or carcass uh, work because um, those large sheets of plywood and MDF will just kill you. Um, you see there's a piece of MDF over here that uh, I use to make bases for a ceramicist in town. and. Um, and the bases are only six or eight inch or 12 inch squares that are beveled. But when you bring in a sheet of MDF, the last thing you want to do is how to try to pick that up and put it onto a table saw or even to lay it off on a table and then saw it with a straight edge. This saves you a lot. It's a, a great tool. I've also seen some people make them themselves with wooden backing and everything else. 
I just happened upon this at that auction, so I was lucky enough to get it at the time. Um, I, I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. I think it's a great tool um, and it's held up very, very well. This spring up here that keeps the wire out of the way, it broke a few years into the use of it. It snapped after a lot of usage. And the funny thing was that I worked with it and I, I rigged a thing to hold it up for years and years and years. And one day when I was recovering from an operation, I decided I would just sort of go around the shop and try to fix things that were broken. Found the company name in the, uh, Googled it, wrote to the company, and I think it was about $7, including shipping. They sent me a new spring. So it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing that you operate with a tool for so long and then don't, uh, uh, don't do anything. Well, you maintain it, but you don't necessarily uh, replace parts um, until I got with it and I realized it was very simple to do. Over here on this side part, this little metal band here is the uh, tape measure running up and down. And on there's a little guide right here to tell you that this is 40 and a half inches or 32 inches here and then you can lock it off and turn this saw and do rip cuts all in all a very handy tool to have and i'm lucky to have it particularly for the price i paid for it i'm not really sure how much they go for these days um, i guess because i've never had to look it up since i already had one I hope you've enjoyed the uh, tour of it. I hope it's answered any questions you might have. If you have any others, feel free to ask them. Uh, I don't know how much I can tell you. I'm just a, I'm not a, an expert on these saws, but um, I guess maybe using it for 20 years makes me partially an expert. Enjoy your day. Talk to you later. Bye.